Greetings hobbies, this is Artans of Vool, and in this video we're going to make a data slate or a tablet or even an etch-a-sketch to demonstrate the hard ops bevel functionality. So I'll start by just scaling up this cube on everything other than the y-axis, so shift and y to do that, and let's bring that somewhere there, and then let's S and X to just scale that a little bit wider there and control an A and apply the scale because we know that not applying the scale causes problems for the bevels. And let's start looking straight into this. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to my modifiers so we can see how these modifiers are being generated by hard ops. And I'm gonna start with just a general bevel for the whole cube. So I'm just gonna press Q and then bevel. And what we can do is just move our mouse left and right and that is gonna make our bevel. And then I can scroll my mouse where well, you can see at the bottom it says how many segments there are. I'm gonna up that to let's say 16 so it's nice and smooth and go somewhere about there. So this is really nice because it gives us good control over effectively what this material looks like. I want something that looks a little bit plasticky as opposed to metal. If I press Q and go back to bevel and change that and make that a lot sharper, this would look something like metal. Or we can just come back in and then make it a little bit more soft, which is going to work quite nicely for this plasticky feel. Now, you can see what we've got is this has made a bevel modifier very quickly. And we can either modify that as I just did by pressing Q and bevel again, or I can come down here and modify the amount just using the modifier as standard. So it adds a lot of options for us by using this hard ops bevel. Now I want to put a screen on this, and again, I want to keep this sort of curved shape going into it, but I probably don't want it being this smooth, as I imagine they'd make it smoother on the outer edge than they would in the middle. So what I'm going to do is press Q and then bevel, but this time when I'm pressing bevel, I'm going to click control, and that's going to add in a new bevel. And you can see that at the bottom, and I can roll the segments up using my mouse wheel and put that up to 16 again, and I can change the width. But you'll notice it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So let's put that down to something quite low, like 0.1 for the width, click, and again, we can't see anything, but that's because this automatically sets a bevel and recognizes that we're gonna add something to this object, which is then gonna need to be beveled a different mount than the original bevel. I'll just demonstrate that by using box cutter. So Alt and W to open up box cutter, and I'm just gonna use a box cut to add my sort of screen cutout, let's say somewhere about there, and then drag that in and then click and we've got that there and you'll notice this has automatically come in with a bevel and that bevel is different to the bevel on the outside and what's cool about this is we can now fiddle around with either you should press q and click bevel and that's gonna fiddle around with the one in the middle so we can make this quite loose or tight if we want and then if i can press q and bevel again it'll start fiddling with the other one so you can change either of them and flick between them just by pressing q and that goes to the outside one Q again and it'll go to the inside one and then you just click to confirm. Otherwise, of course, we've still got the options here of fiddling around with our bevels and you'll notice that the way this has worked is that Hard Ops has recognized that this boolean that we were bringing in needs to come above the second bevel so that it affects it. We could always drag it down and then it's not being affected by it at all. So we can always play around with our modifiers as we normally would. But hard ops is quite clever. Let's just come to this bevel and up it a little bit. I'm gonna put it at 0.2. So it's not as wide as this outer one, but it's pretty good there. So now I want to cut out, let's say a handhold for this. And I'm gonna use box cutter and press D and come into the Engon cutter. If you haven't used box cutter before, then there's a link in the description with a playlist for lots of box cutter stuff which hopefully you'll find fun and then let's just start putting this in and let's go somewhere like there i think that might be a bit too much at this point but that's all right i'll deal with that in a second let's go through and do i like that positioning no possibly not in fact actually i'm just going to control and z to undo that i want a bit less of an angle so let's go with 45 degrees there 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 cool now you'll notice that this now has the bevel of the second beveling option. It is not as big a bevel. You can tell that in the modifier section because again, it has put the Boolean above that last bevel. So hard ops is trying to be clever and recognize where everything can go. We can always drag that down if we want no bevel at all, or what I want is it just keep the same bevel as the outside edge. So I'm actually gonna drag that all the way up and put that above the first bevel so that now we've got that working and it's keeping the same bevel as this outside edge. So this is all about controlling your modifier stack and knowing how each modifier is going to be affected with the top modifier being the one that's done first. So at the moment, this is the cutout and then we've got the bevel acting on all of that 
and then we've got the second cutter there and then the bevel that just affects that. And what's great about this as opposed to real bevels, so if we wanted to really bevel something, I'd go into edge mode, select on an edge control and B and we could bevel that. That is permanent. I can obviously causing some problems now because we've got bevels on bevels, but ignore that. But we don't want this permanently or I don't want this permanently. I want to be able to change these as I see fit because I might change the way I think that this should look. For example, this outer bevel, I might just decide it needs to be greater than this or it needs to be less than this. So I can always just keep filling around with things as much as I want because these are non-destructive options. And that's really, really helpful when you're designing a shape. Now, the last thing I want to do is I actually want these outer surfaces to look really plasticky and give them a bigger edge on all of the ones other than the handhold. So what I'm gonna do is slightly different. I'm now gonna go into edge mode and I'm gonna select those edges. So I want that edge, that edge, and that edge. Now we can bevel these edges as well. And you can do this inside the edge option. It it's not going to affect everything. You just press Q and where it says mark, you can just hold down control and that's going to add a bevel. Now I'm actually just going to come into another cube and just demonstrate that because that's not going to work on this. We'll talk about why in a second. So let's just scale that up and then I'm going to go into edge mode, select that edge and then Q and then control and click on mark. And you can see we're just going to add a bevel onto this and it works in exactly the same way by adding a bevel modifier, but this time it is being controlled as a vertex group. And you can go through and let's say I want to do this edge, Q, control click on mark, and we get a second bevel. So I could do that as let's say a chamfer. And all of these will be different vertex groups. And if I come out of this, I could press Q, bevel, and then I'll affect one, and then I could press Q, and then I'll affect the other. So just the same functionality, but this time on a specific edge. Let's delete that. Now I want to do the same thing over here, as I said, on these three edges, but this time, if I press Q and control click on mark, it's going to, well, destroy everything. It doesn't look particularly good. And I'm actually gonna leave that there. Let's scroll up to something like 16, might need to be more than that actually, and click, and you can see we've got this God awful mess. Now that is because the bevel has come in at the bottom and Blender can't work out what to do with this acting on top of all of the other bevels. So I'm actually just gonna drag that to the top and it's still not gonna work very nicely because now we've got a bevel that the other bevels are working on, but it's a bit less of a problem. Now, there is actually a very quick way of solving this at this point. All we need to do is come into our bevel and instead of having it work on a vertex group, I'm gonna change this to work on an edge weight. Now that now goes back to nothing because none of our edges have a weight on them. But if I now select those same edges, Q and then click mark again, it has marked those as having a weight and now I can start fiddling around with this mount. You'll notice it's causing some problems at points. That's only because of the lines that Blender has automatically made to come off of these. If I just turn on wireframe, you can see this is gonna be causing problems over here because of these edges. Now these at the moment aren't permanent edges, which means that we can actually do something to make sure that Blender doesn't have these problems. So I'm gonna go into object mode. Let's get rid of the wireframe because it's just, actually let's leave it for a second. And all I'm gonna do is go into edge mode, press K for the knife tool, click Z to go down, and then just so this works on all sides, I'm gonna press C to cut through, click, hit enter, and you'll notice now that we've got this edge, it sorts everything out. We don't have this horrible movement along these lines. You can also fiddle around with the loop slide and turning that on and off to fix that, but I just prefer the safety of having this where I know exactly where it is. So at this point, let's turn off wireframe, We've got all of our bevels that we can fiddle around with. We can do them individually. So for example, we've got our major outside curve there. We've got our other outside edges, which I can fiddle around here. Turn that back to 0.6. And we've got our bevel on our inside edge there. And again, we can fiddle around with that. So we've got three levels of beveling. You could have even more if you've got more objects cutting into this that gives us control over our different shape in a non-destructive method. The other thing that I'll mention just quickly, just in case you want to add more things to this, for example, I want to add some buttons. So let's bring in a cylinder, rotate that round on the X by 90. Let's bring that over here. Let's scale that up somewhere there. So this might be like a touchpad for different directions. Uh, we don't want that that wide. So let's X on the Y 
and then GM1 bring that forward. So I want that somewhere there, maybe actually there where the thumb's gonna be. And then I might want to shift and D and make another button. So let's S and shift and Y to scale that and everything other than the Y. And then I can click on both of those and press Q and then bevel and it will bevel both of them. Let's go up to eight segments and something like that. So we've got this nice rounded material and then I can, actually that's probably sticking out a bit far. Bring that further in and then let's Q and we'll do an array and we're going to press X to have that going upwards, I think, something like there. And then Q and control click on array and we'll add another one going in on the X axis. So we've got another set of buttons and let's just move that around to there. So they're accessible by the hand that's holding that and let's just move that down to there. Actually, maybe I want some more buttons. So let's Q, Array, scroll up. Could have lots of buttons. Let's try something like that. And then we'll just cut some of those out. Using Box Cutter, we just need to bring that box down all the way there. There we go. If you haven't got hard ops or box cutter already and you find that interesting, there is a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means that the channel gets a little bit of support. If you buy through there, it costs you no extra, so anything like that's really appreciated. Also, if you want more videos and more great content, then do check out the Patreon, where we're a week ahead on videos and you get other great little bits and content. Have a great day, guys.